Recipes for Technical Trading Success in Cook's Kitchen. Hey everybody, Cooker here, and we're back to uh, the semiconductors talking about seismic semi shifts. This week with Qualcomm and NVIDIA, after a tumultuous 10 days with AMD and Intel and Taiwan Semi. And so we, the, uh, this story sort of unfolded on the day that I did last week's video, July 29th, I did uh, Release the Ryzen, AMD Roars in the Nanometer Wars, and uh, you know, characterizing what, what AMD was able to do as Intel falls apart, they're not ready for sub 10 nanometer technology, AMD is stealing the show using the, the, the foundry uh, Taiwan Semi. So what's, what happened, what did we learn from, from Qualcomm that night on July 29th? Well, here we go. A uh, nice beat on EPS, the bottom line, nice beat on top, on the top line. Uh, but more important, this key headline here, right here, they resolved their dispute with Huawei and signed a new license agreement. Uh, and that sent the stock much higher. Uh, CEO talked about the 5G rollout, you know, their investments that are, are paying off as they, you know, plan to win in this space, so to speak. And uh, re-inking a deal with Huawei was key. So let's let's take a look at some of those details. Uh, Qualcomm gets $1.8 in back royalties from Huawei and ongoing royalties of nearly $250 million per quarter. So, you know, roughly $900 million to a billion uh, a year. And more importantly, they've got this long-term global patent license agreement, um, which is, you know, which is a big deal for both companies to be able to uh, you know, uh, enter the 5G arena uh, and compete and partner. So you may know or not know that Huawei is a Chinese multinational. Um, uh, and interestingly enough, it was uh, founded by um, a former deputy regimental chief in the People's Liberation Army. Let's take a look at uh, why that might be controversial. If you don't know why Huawei has been banned from you know, providing technology in the U.S., um, the U.S. believes that Huawei could be used by China for spying via its 5G equipment. It points to Mr. Ren's military background and Huawei's role in communication networks to argue why it represents a security risk. So, um, you know, that uh, th this was sort of a, uh, an underlying tremor in, in semiconductor markets when uh, Huawei would be banned from from U.S. technology platforms. All right, so just taking a look at you know the significance of this agreement. There's also a nuance here that it will include a cross license granting back rights to certain of Huawei's patents. So there's a there's a a, a partnership here that uh, you know that is sort of fine tuned um, and and helps both companies obviously. So what did Qualcomm do after this announcement? Well, there it is. You know, the, the stock basically got re-rated and, and leaped higher from, you know, 93 bucks up above 100, uh, still headed up today. And, uh, you know, it was just a, uh, just a key win for Qualcomm to pull this off. All right. Um, and, and analysts have fueled it obviously in raising their price targets. Some analysts were, you could argue, were behind the curve, say the RBC guy. Uh, the Canaccord analyst definitely wasn't. He already had a price target of 115, and he goes to 137. Uh, Susquehanna, very respectable, Christopher Rowland. Now let's look at some of the details, though, in, in these calls, the key insights, as I'm calling them. Um, the J.P. Morgan analyst uh, raised his price target and noted that, th that this creates a uh, sort of an outsized bull case for Qualcomm because of potential 5G shipments to Huawei as the two companies uh, learn to do business peacefully together. And Morgan Stanley noted that, you know, Huawei was the last major non-payer. You know, it, uh, Qualcomm has always prided itself on its proprietary um, IP, 
and licensing it to handset makers and chip makers, that sort of thing. Um, so now they've they've finally got the last guy to pay. <laughs> and uh, key bank analysts also noticed that this leads the agreement leads to, um, you know, management says it can figure out how to sell to Huawei. All right. Uh, the Deutsche Bank analyst noted that the key, the Q4 outlook is being impacted by the delay, delayed launch of a new global 5G phone from a major player. Well, that's probably Apple. Apple isn't going to, you know, the, the, the next new iPhone maybe probably won't be 5G. And so uh, that pushes things out a little bit. Apple wants to take the time and get it right. And when everybody has access to 5G technology, which is, you know, could be uh, orders of magnitude faster than 4G. All right. So that was the uh, that was my Qualcomm Huawei deep dive. Um that sent that stock much higher, and uh, you know, it's sort of fairly valued now. But I'd, I'd buy it near a hundred bucks. All right, now our next story: Nvidia. Will Nvidia pay forty-five billion for ARM Holdings? I just took a screenshot of a recent Bloomberg article. The rumors were floating around in July. Is Nvidia looking at buying ARM Holdings, privately held by SoftBank? Uh, remember, uh, uh, SoftBank bought. The UK chip designer for 32 billion back in 2016, and apparently uh, SoftBank went to Apple and said, "Hey, are you interested? Uh, you know, because Apple's designing their own chips and may want more technology there." And, and this 45 billion figure—that's one I just made up because I figured they're not, you know, they're going to have to pay at least 45, at least 40 billion, and some numbers are estimates are as high as 50 billion, if if SoftBank was going to IPO Arm Holdings, um, you know, so that's the issue. Do they? Do they do better? So we need to break this down a little bit. And uh, I did something for my subscribers last night in Taser, uh, where we own NVIDIA and are doing quite nicely as it makes new highs here. Um, so let's take a look what I wrote up. NVIDIA's call to arm. Is it a good idea? Um, also, NVIDIA rallied to new highs above uh, 450 yesterday because AMD rallied to new highs on the call from Jeffries. Uh, I should note this, that the Jeffries analyst, he goes to 95 bucks on, on, on AMD because he, he already sees uh, AMD capturing 30% share from Intel because of, you know, the, the sub 10 nanometer technology. But he thinks that can morph into a bull case of 50% share uh, in four to five years. Uh, so that, that's why AMD uh, is just, you know, a monster right now. And if you can buy that anywhere near 80 uh, do so. So I tried to, you know, understand why would NVIDIA buy ARM? And on the surface, I don't like it. I don't like the idea because it's so much money and the synergies aren't that great. And many of the analysts have said the same thing. Um, so let's just note, remember uh, what's going on with SoftBank trying to sell stuff. Well, uh, uh, the, the billionaire of the Vision Fund, the $100 billion Vision Fund, you know, has been selling stuff. He sold some T-Mobile. Um, he also had to take some write downs in uh, WeWork and Uber recently. Um, and he always thought Ar he always thought Arm Holdings was his, uh, you know, it was his most important acquisition he'd ever made. And that was in 2016. And maybe it still is. So, um, you know, but then the report started to change since since mid late July to well, maybe Nvidia only wants part of Arm. And they would make some kind of, you know, they're not going to buy the whole thing. They're going to buy certain rights, form some type of strategic investment or partnership. Um, and maybe that's for, uh, for for data center. And that's why I, th I think it, it seems redundant to me. Uh, what does ARM specialize in? They specialize in, in what's called instruction sets. So how chips communicate with software. Um, and, you know, for somebody like Apple who designs their own chips, you know, they need that kind of technology. Uh, but ARM also has divisions in automotive, smart cities, wearables, 5G. Let's just take a look at their website here. Um, I, I thought this was interesting. They also claim to have the world's fastest su supercomputer, the, um, uh, the Fuguko, <laughs> Fuguko, Fugaku. 
is that way I would pronounce that if I knew anything about the Japanese language. Um, but, uh, you know, this is right in line with NVIDIA's business, right? Um, you know, NVIDIA creates massively parallel architectures of GPU chips. Uh, what ARM does is they do it with core processors. So they've got 8 million core processors in this basically scientific research computer. Uh, just showing you some of uh, ARM's other business, obviously, you know, they want to be a, a player in 5G um, and, and AI, smart cities, wearables, and they've got a, a specialized IoT platform. All right, back to where I stand on this. Uh, Morgan Stanley, the analyst, came out and said the synergies are unclear for, uh, for an NVIDIA ARM deal. You know, and, and my bottom line is it seems like it's too much cash not enough direct synergy and maybe just redundancy, um, you know, so it would only be incremental improvement in the data center. And then it could create some licensing issues across the industry because of what ARM does with its instruction set uh, software. So um, a lot of ifs, and so I'm surprised that NVIDIA has rallied 10% in two weeks in the face of this. Like the market likes the idea or What's coincident is that AMD is rallying so hard, and AMD is like a little NVIDIA um, in terms of the technology and uh, you know high-speed GPU chips, serving the data center, gaming, uh, notebooks, uh, tablets, PCs. So, uh, what has what has NVIDIA done? Well, there it is. Just continues to to launch. It's up, you know, like I said, ten percent. So despite my view, my favorite stock rocks on, and it, and it will continue to do so. You know, I, if you get a chance to buy NVIDIA near 425, uh, I would do it. But we need to see what happens with this ARM deal and, um, and what the details are. So far, the market's not scared of it. Uh, if NVIDIA has to shell out uh, a boatload of cash, whether that's $10 billion or $30 billion to have the, the strategic partnership or ownership of certain assets, um, I'm just, again, I'm surprised the stock is up because I don't, I don't see anything beyond incremental gain. Uh, but then I'm not Jensen Wong and he is the ultimate strategist. So in, in semi, so he knows what he's doing. All right. So tune in next week and hopefully I'll have some updates on the NVIDIA for arm potential deal. All right. Thanks for joining me in the kitchen.